All right, 4.2. In 4.2, we're talking about confidence intervals. What you'll see is that the majority of the rest of the class focuses on two topics, one of which is confidence intervals. So this is a fairly important section. This is definitely one you want to spend a little bit of extra time on. Get really comfortable with confidence intervals because it's going to pop up over and over and over again. In case you're curious, the other of the two that we'll be focused on for the rest of the class is 4.3. And for most students, 4.3 is harder than 4.2. So 4.3, if you're going to focus on 4.2, definitely focus on 4.3. 4.3 is hypothesis testing, and it's super important. This is very important. The next one is very, very, very important. At any rate, confidence intervals, 4.2. Before I get into confidence intervals, 4.2, I want to talk about stuff from 4.1. You're like, oh, I thought we were done with 4.1. Well, yes, but um, in 4.1, I talked about the sampling distribution and I made this little chart up here because I focused on how shape, center, and spread is really important. And I compared what shape, center, and spread will be in 4.1 with what they were in 3.1. Uh, we compared the parent distribution and the sampling distribution. Turns out that in 4.2 and 4.3 and for the rest of this class pretty much, shape, center, and spread is super important. So really what I need to do is add on to this little document that I'm making to keep track of the shape, the center, and the spread for all the stuff that we talk about. Turns out I've already done that. I created a document that lists shape, center, and spread for all the topics of this class because it ends up being fairly important. And I want to show you where it is. Where it is is on my website. So if you click, if you go on your Moodle page, there's a link directly to my website, which will take you here. And then instead of going under class pages, math 243, like you typically do, if you go under statistics tutorials, you'll see something called Math 243, Shape, Center, and Spread. And if you go into this document, you'll see this. And this, I think, will be really important for you as this class goes on. This has so much information on it, it's probably a little overwhelming right now. But maybe I can kind of start talking you through what's on here, and I'll refer back to it pretty much in every section that we do for almost the rest of the class. We talk about Chapter 7 a little bit at the end of the class, and that's not on here, but everything else is. So again, here is a neater version of what I showed you, see if I can find it, here, right? Chapter three, shape, center, spread with some notation in here. I think that that's pretty similar to what you see here. Chapter three, the topic, it's about probability, right? Probability for a single observation. What is the probability that, how do we learn this? One pizza has more than 20 pepperonis on it. That was sort of the idea. I gave you the population average number of pepperonis on a pizza. And I gave you the population standard deviation for the number of pepperonis on a pizza. And I said, if you pick one pizza at random, what's the probability that there's more than 20 pepperonis on that pizza? And maybe you remember that applet with the black boxes falling from the sky. And those each represented a single pepperoni pizza and how many pepperonis were on there. And we talked about, yeah, even if the average was, what was it 16, I think, in that example, it's possible to get more than 20 on a pizza because not all the pizzas have 16. There's some uh, spread specifically the standard deviation, which I think was five in that example. And we compared that to 4.1, which was the sampling distribution, which was not the black boxes at the top of the applet, but now the blue boxes down at the bottom of the applet. And the logic here was, yeah, you can get a single pepperoni pizza with a lot of pepperoni on it. Uh, but if you grab like, I don't know, 20 pizzas, and you found the average number of pepperonis on those 20 pizzas, it's probably pretty close to 16, the population average here. There's still a little bit of wiggle room. I mean, there's still a spread. It's just a smaller spread than what it used to be. The population standard deviation is not what you use for the spread over here in 4.1. You use a number that's smaller than that because you divide that by some other number. That number ended up being the square root of n. Um, and this column right here gives you all the information you need for the sampling distribution. We're still dealing with probability, except now we're talking about the sampling distribution, not the parent distribution. We have a criteria for normality. Over here, it just said, assume the number of pepperoni on a pizza is normally distributed. And 4.1 doesn't have to tell you that. It can even tell you that the number of pepperoni on a pizza is right skewed. That's fine as long as my sample size is large enough. We get normality by one of two different ways in 4.1. Either the parent distribution is normal, in which case the sampling distribution is automatically normal, or my sample size is large enough. That was what was called the central limit theorem. And the cutoff we're using in this class was 30. We had a fancy symbol for center, mu sub x bar, a fancy symbol for spread, sigma sub x bar, and formulas for each of those in terms of mu and sigma and n, our sample size. 
Uh, we use normal CDF and inverse norm in 3.1. I think we use both normal CDF and inverse norm in 4.1. So I suppose those should have both been listed there. Um, but that's the idea for 4.1, the sampling distribution. In 4.2, we're going to talk about confidence intervals. And it'll turn out that confidence intervals are kind of like 4.1 and that we're still talking about an average of things. We're still going to be dealing with the sampling distribution here. So my data type is still a mean here. Turns out we're going to care about normality. We're going to care about the center. We're going to care about the spread. But we're going to have different symbols, different notions of shape, center, spread in 4.2 than we did in 4.1. And there'll be some extra formulas and new calculator functions that we're using. And that'll continue to happen for the rest of the class. And you're going to have a hard time keeping all these straight. And I recommend learning them on their own. But if you want one centralized document that lists all this stuff for you, here it is. And this will be useful in terms of studying for like midterm, final exam, that kind of thing.